I have a Netgear GSM 7352S version 2. It's um, probably about an eight year old switch. I uh, get on eBay. I got mine for $60, and all I had to do was grab a vacuum and suck some of the dust out. Um, that happens with that stuff as well. It has fans, and well, fans do nothing but you know, move dust, especially if it's not a nice uh, control server room. So um, I set this back to factory defaults, and that is just by plugging it in with a null modem cable to a USB to serial adapter RS-232, so it's a 9-pin adapter. And we're at the user prompt, and we go admin, nothing for password, and we're brought right into the prompt, and we go to enable. So this video is going to be the focus of inner VLAN routing. It is going to be having multiple VLAN set up on a switch that performs layer 3 or routing and be able to ping from VLAN to VLAN to VLAN with the ultimate goal of putting a router into the mix and getting all the VLANs to go back out to the router. So um, Cisco's the big dog. They're really the standard. And one of the interesting things with Cisco, you got to go to global config mode to start setting up VLANs. This net here is interesting because you go to VLAN database and you set up VLANs there. Now, VLAN 10 command creates a layer 2 VLAN. VLAN routing 10 enables it for layer 3 operation. Now, I'm going to name these VLANs, and these are going to be for a wired, because we're going to do a later video where we're going to do wireless VLANs. and we're going to go system and V startup config so on Cisco it'd be copy running config startup config some Cisco's it could be write mem or it could be um, copy R-U-S-T you know R-U space S-T just as a shortcut because you just have to have enough of the word to make it individual and then it's good so we're going to go ahead and say yes to that. So we've got all that. Now I'm going to do a show run. That's it. We don't have much more than this. But you do see that by creating these VLANs and putting routing in there, we've created interfaces also. And this is so we can do a soft interface into a VLAN. And we're going to go ahead and do that, but we've got to do some other stuff. So what we don't have is we have not told the switch to turn itself into a router. So we're going to go configure go IP routing. Exit. We're going to show run again. That is going to turn us into... A router. There we go. Alright, so the next thing that you got to understand about VLANs is VLANs on their own will not come up even though we've created them and put an IP address on an interface. So I'm going to go interface VLAN 10 IP address. Sorry, hold on. 
probably just quicker just to type it out. And the slash 24 is the subnet mask. And I'll show you how we could also do this on the next one. And I'm doing tab completion. That's 24 bits. Each 255 represents 8. 8 times 3 is 24. got my VLANs created. Alright, so I want to show you something. We're going to do show IP route and you'll see nothing. Alright, that's fine. Now we're going to do this. We'll go back to config and we're going to build into this whole VLAN thing and them have an IP address on it. Uh, we're going to do interface loopback 0 IP address and we're going to do 10 actually we're going to do 192 255.254 slash 32. 32 is also a way of saying and that means that it's a single host IP. Exit. And this switch will do up to 7 loopbacks. But we're just going to do 2 for demonstration purposes. And this should work. There we go. Yep, we have two connected routes. We have IP routing enabled. And we have 0% packet loss. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we can actually get these VLANs up. So I'm going to do show IP int brief, and we see that they're down. Uh, now off screen, I have a Cisco um, switch configured for trunk, and here's the thing. If you make a trunk connection and these VLANs are specified to be carried over the trunk, once you make that trunk connection and that port is physically lit up, it'll bring all our interfaces up. So I'm going to go to, uh, and it's going to be interface 48 on this. So we're going to go back to con, pig mode, we're going to go interface 170 slash 48, and we're going to do VLAN participation include 10, 20, and I don't think we can do a range on this kind of screwy in that manner where we could, I'm sure we, we could do like all, but I don't want to do that. I want to be um, purposeful in how we do this. We're going to do VLAN PVID 1. And that's just saying that our on tag VLAN is going to be 1. That's fun. And then let's, um, I've got to make sure that we've done all this right. So we're going to exit. Exit show run int one slash zero slash forty eight. I think that's going to be good. Let me make a connection here. And I may have to refer to my notes. I think this will. If I have to, I'll pause the video, correct it, and then show what we had to do to get it going. Alright, hold on while I pause this. Turns out I had to do no correction, I just had to wait. 
All right, so we are up on all our interfaces. And again, it's because we have these VLANs. All basically tagged on an interface. And that means that 48 participates in all these VLANs, where normally so let me show you something. We'll go and uh, show run int. And we're going to do one slash zero slash ten. All right. So we're going to go on. Go int one slash zero slash ten. Go VLAN. Participation include ten. VLAN pvid ten. And what that says is go ahead and put the port physically in VLAN 10 and then also make its native tagging 10. We gotta do these two things in other switch nomenclature. Uh, on Cisco it'd be switch port mode access then be access VLAN 10. On HPE Aruba or even like TP-Link it would be VLAN 10 on tagged 1 slash 0 slash 10. So these two commands do the same thing as what I just told you for Cisco and HPE or uh, TP-Link. So now if we exit and we exit again and we show run. There we go. So we do have this in, in VLAN 10 and it's going to tag. or on tag for, for 10. And that would also bring the VLAN up. So if we didn't have our trunk and I did a show IP route, you would have saw the 10 network come up because I at least have an interface. Doesn't matter if it's trunk, doesn't matter if it's a host interface. As long as it's up and we've got something physically connected to it, it's going to bring this up. So now what we do, we can ping. We're going to source it from loopback. I don't know if we... Oh, I guess we can. So let's source it from loopback 1. Awesome. Let's source it from loopback 0. Awesome. And let's source it from... Let's see if we do a VLAN source. Nope. Interface. Nope. So other manufacturers allow you to actually source from a VLAN and if there's an uh, IP address interface in that VLAN it'll just automatically assume it but that's fine and there we go so we've established layer 3 on this switch so the next video is going to show how we're going to start integrating a router to this how we're going to build up our routing table because if we do IP route, uh, show IP route, all this stuff shows up as connected. These are directly connected routes. We don't need any external. But as soon as we get to static routing, you'll see how that's going to change. And you'll even see here we have ripped OSPF connected static uh, BGP uh, intra area OSPF or inner area, um, E1, E2, and 1, and 2. These are all different OSPF uh, types. All right, so that's it for this video. I wanted to keep it short. It's under 15 minutes, which I think will do the trick. And again, this switch I got off eBay for 60 bucks. Um, it took me about four hours to get used to the, um, the CLI and just looking at the uh, Netgear documentation and then it all clicked and as soon as it clicked I was off to the races.